Hey everyone, so I think it's safe to say that we are currently living in peak Souls times. It really does feel like there's a new Souls-like coming out every single week at this point. And with the current lineup of games shown at like Gamescom and everything, I think there's going to be souls likes coming out uh, pretty steadily for the next few months and year. It really is the it thing with developers, both on the AAA front and on the smaller indie front as well. And I think the immense success of Elden Ring has basically ensured that we will be continuing to get many souls likes in the future. However, the question remains, how good are these games in reality? Uh, what I thought I would do today is sort of recollect and reminisce about the many souls likes I've played over the years and rank them on a wonderful little tier list and discuss what I actually think of them and whether any of them are good enough to warrant a place next to the best of the best in the actual From Software games. This is the list you see before you. Uh, we'll go over the games in a little bit, but to explain the tier ranking, we obviously have the top tier. These are excellent games and basically go hand in hand again with my favorites from the actual Soul series as well. Next we have the good games. These are very solid, highly recommended. Do play them. Uh, obviously they don't match uh, the top tier output of FromSoft, but they are still very, very good and highly recommended games on my part. Next we have the meh games, uh, these are the games which I was sort of indifferent to, you know, I would say play them if they are on sale and come up with your own conclusion. You might like these games more than me, you might like them less than me, I was pretty indifferent. Next we have the avoid games, fairly self-explanatory, I would strongly not recommend playing these games because they are shitty. And finally we have the haven't played category, obviously uh, with the amount of Souls games out there, uh, I've not played all of these games and I will go through and talk about the ones that I've not touched and they will be going into this tier. Now weirdly about this tier list, uh, I couldn't actually find a tier list that didn't include the actual FromSoft games as well. Uh, and obviously this is a ranking for Souls likes, not the actual Souls series. I've done one of those rankings a couple of years ago I think at this point. Yeah, this is not that. This is firmly focusing on the games that emulate the Souls formula. And finally, before we jump in, as always, this is a tier list, half made in good fun, and these are all my opinions. So if you like one of these games more than I do, or less than I do, you know, just don't jump at my throat because I probably wouldn't care either way. Yeah, let's go ahead and jump into this. I don't really have a particular order I'm going to do this in. I think I'm just going to go... As I feel starting with Lords of the Fallen. Lords of the Fallen I think is probably the safest uh, tier placement ever because it's going firmly into the avoid category. Lords of the Fallen really was one of the first Souls likes. I think that was probably the first time I even saw the term Souls like used in a context. It was really billed as, you know, like it's made by a AAA developer, which I think it actually wasn't, but it's going to be more epic, it's gonna look better than Dark Souls, and it's gonna have a story and everything, and it's gonna be the best thing since sliced bread. Lords of the Fallen came out and it was incredibly mediocre. This is not a good game at all. And the reason it's not a good game is because the combat system sucks. Uh, the de dev team completely took the wrong lessons from the FromSoft combat system. They really tried going for weighty, you know, that was the main sort of uh, draw of this game, the weighty combat. And believe me, we're going to cover a couple of these weighty games on this list and they are almost always shitty. Uh, weighty combat does not feel good a lot of the times. Not saying it can't be done right, but in Lords of the Fallen it doesn't feel good. It feels like you're swinging your sword underwater. Even the fastest weapons feel incredibly sluggish. The dodging feels sluggish. The whole movement system feels sluggish. And because of the sluggish nature, you never actually feel like you have full control of your character. It always feels a little bit janky. Combine that, the game has a serious trouble with its bosses. Uh, I think like a large majority of the bosses are giant brutes wielding tower shields. 
Most of them can be defeated by circling around them and the game itself is nowhere near as difficult as you would think. Now I'm not saying Lords of the Fallen doesn't do anything right, the game does look pretty good and you know I don't mind the setting, uh, I don't mind obviously having a character that is actually voiced even though the main dude whose name I don't even know is fairly generic. So it can be clearly seen that love and care did go into the game, however it's just the dev team took the wrong lessons from emulating the From combat system, they thought people want weighty and that is not what people want at all. Alright, who should we go for next? I think the next game I'm going to talk about is Salt and Sanctuary. Just like Lords of the Fallen was the first 3D Souls-like clone, Salt and Sanctuary was really billed as the first uh, 2D Souls clone. Not saying that it didn't trailblaze a lot, but as someone who has only recently played this game, I first played through Salt and Sanctuary actually in 2022 when I decided to dig out my Vita. Uh, I cannot place Salt and Sanctuary any higher than the Met tier in good conscience. I think this game is really a product of its time. Uh, again, as one of the earliest, probably first 2D Souls clones, you can really tell that the dev team wasn't 100% sure on how to adapt the Souls combat system to 2D. Not saying that they didn't do too well, uh, because they did. The combat system does work on a lot of fronts. However, it is oftentimes very, very frustrating. In fact, the whole game is a little bit on the frustrating side, starting with the fact that it's a 2D game that doesn't have a map. Now, I know that Souls games do not have maps in general, Elden Ring being the exception, but whereas that can work in a 3D game with a 3D space, it really does not work in a 2D Metroidvania type setting. The game and its environments are incredibly hard to navigate. You really have sort of a hard time visualizing how areas link together because it's a 2D game, it doesn't make sense, like no 2D game's geometry makes sense and without a map the game is incredibly annoying and frustrating to navigate. The combat system again does work and there is a lot of weapon variety and a lot of fun to be had with fighting the enemies, where I think it really falls short is the bosses. And the reason it falls short is that the dodge system is incredibly clunky in this game. Basically, all of your iframes, as I understand, are tied to your equip load. So basically, if you put anything more than a loincloth on, you are going to be losing major, major iframes. And it's going to make dodging the bosses who are often huge and have very quick attacks very, very difficult. That means you will be getting hit by a lot, and the healing system in the game is fairly weird as well. Uh, I don't know, I just was not having a lot of fun with this game, fighting the bosses and navigating the environments, and it was just generally a bit tiring to get through. Now again, I do commend this game for being the first to adapt the formula, but I think really it has been way overshadowed by 2D Souls likes that do basically everything way better than Salt and Sanctuary. Now, not to detract from the devs too much, the sequel, Salt and Sacrifice, apparently is a lot better and has fixed a lot of the mistakes and annoyances in the first game. I have not played Salt and Sacrifice, so I can't comment on that, but again, Salt and Sanctuary is a little bit of a product of its own time. What should we go for next? Uh, I feel like I'm going for all the meh games, but let's talk about Darksiders 3 a little bit. Darksiders 3, as much as it hurts me, is gonna have to go into the meh category as well. Now, you guys probably know I am a massive Darksiders series fan. I love, absolutely love Darksiders 1. I do like Darksiders 2 a lot, but 3? 3 is just not it. Now listen, it's still Darksiders, it still has the awesome setting, it still has the really good art style, I, I really like the art style of this game, but I'm just not sure having the Souls formula for a Darksiders game was necessarily the best move. Darksiders was always more of like a Zelda type game to me, with a bit of Devil May Cry combat, and the Souls formula just doesn't work well with the whole setting and vibe of the game. 
even though all of the characters, you know, death, war, etc., lose their powers at the start of each game, that's pretty much the trope, you're still meant to feel fairly powerful. I mean, you're playing one of the horsemen of the apocalypse, and the Souls combat formula where you're very stamina dependent, where it's very easy to die, just doesn't gel with the fact that you're supposed to be feeling pretty powerful. Fury simply feels weak, and of course this game does suffer from the fact that you have the whip as your main weapon. It's a bit of a Sekiro... Uh, it's a bit of a thing that Sekiro also suffers from, that you're essentially using one weapon throughout the whole game. Uh, Again, and while the art style and the setting is there, the game also has some pretty major issues with performance. Uh, it's one of the few big games I've played where there were some genuine problems with performance and slowdown, and even some crashes at a couple of points. So again, I love the series. I did have some fun playing Darksiders 3. I just wish they stuck with the Zelda Vania uh, slash Devil May Cry combat instead of Souls combat. Alright, I think let's pick a game that I really enjoy, because let's focus on the good as well. Blasphemous is going to go into the top tier category. I know this might be surprising to some people, but I've played Blasphemous three times since it came out, once on stream. Uh, and twice on my own and each of the playthroughs I've enjoyed more than the previous ones now granted the last one was when the DLCs came out when the final DLC came out uh, This game has just absolutely fantastic at this point Blasphemous really has grown and I think they've achieved something great by the end their DLCs are excellent for this game but even without the DLC if we just take the main game the 2D Souls formula is done well in this game. Like Salt and Sanctuary, where there are some teething issues, Blasphemous really nails the combination and the balance of having Castlevania type combat and Souls combat. The combat actually feels very, very satisfying. There are some good combos. Once you understand sort of the move system, you can pull off some sick combos with the upgrade path if you do it correctly. The dodges feel satisfying, there's a wide variety of moves, and yeah, it just all feels very good. And aside from the great combat system, Blasphemous really, I think, gets the setting right. A lot of these Souls clones have trouble with having a really strong setting. You know, FromSoft games have excellent settings for the most part, and a lot of the clones try to emulate the sort of bleak world and then just end up completely failing at it. Blasphemous is the exact opposite. I think Custodia in some ways is even more miserable and bleaker than many of the settings FromSoft has created. I just really love the sort of Lovecraftian aspect of the miracle, the sort of weird like Christian punishment themes throughout, the ties to the Inquisition and all of those motives. The setting is absolutely wonderful and you can tell that a lot of care was put into both the art style, which I just absolutely love. I love this sort of pixelated retro art style, along with having a very, very strong setting. So this is one of those few games where I think the lore and the setting very easily matches and even exceeds some of the worlds that are found in FromSoft games. Overall, Blasphemous, I think I can't recommend it enough. If you have not played this game, play it because you are going to be having a lot of fun with it. It really is, I think, one of the pinnacles of the 2D Souls like. All right, what should we go for next? Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the Surge games. Surge games, Robot Souls. Now, first of all, I'm gonna have to just come out and say that I've not played the Surge 2. I hear that it's a bit of a weird one. I'm pretty much seeing 50-50 split opinions on whether it's better than the Surge one or it's way worse. But the Surge one I have played and it's going to go into the good category. I think the Surge is really a very interesting setting for a Souls clone, this sort of sci-fi uh, world. And I do like the robot combat aspect of it. Again, one of the things that this game gets right is the combat. Finally, we have a game where the weighty combat, which this game does have weighty combat, 
makes sense because everybody is wielding robot suits. It's completely understandable. The other thing is the surge really does Aside from the combat, the surge really does do the environments right. Uh, it actually has very good interconnected areas with sort of like the unlocking of the shortcuts and getting back to original places. And I do have to give a shout out to the dismemberment mechanic. It's a very interesting system of, you know, being able to sort of cripple your opponents. It's just a really, really fun Souls-like. That's about all I can say about it. I mean, the good category is probably going to be the most difficult to talk about because these are just good, fun little games with good combat systems. Nothing too special, you know, I'm not gonna like rant and rave about how good they are, but I also have no major criticisms of them. Sure, the Surge, some of the environments are boring, sure, but overall, it's just a fun little game uh, of like robot hack and slash Souls-like. Yeah, pick it up if you want, It's it's you're gonna have a fun little time with it. Alright, I think let's knock out some of the games that I've not had a chance to play uh, on the list. Let's look at this. Kronos, I've not heard of this one at all. Uh, Code Vein, the anime souls, ugh, it's not for me. I don't like the look of any of the settings. The anime characters look weird. It's the bosses look way too difficult some of them it's just i whenever i've seen this game i have had zero interest to pick it up and try it death's door this is another one i've not even heard of i will look at some of these because i am interested uh in what these actually are and maybe some of them are very good but yeah haven't heard of death's door speaking of death let's talk a little bit about death's gambit now the question is, is this talking about uh, the original Death Gambit or the Afterlife update, which I think is actually pretty much a new game. I think this is the original. Uh, the picture is way too tiny. If it's the original Death Gambit, it's a good thing because that's the one I've played uh, and it's going firmly into the Avoid category. Yeah, Death Gambit, uh, again, it's pixelated Souls Clone 2D. Unfortunately, it is just way, way, way outclassed by Blasphemous in just about every single way. The pixel art style is a lot better in Blasphemous, the setting is a lot better, the story is way more interesting. Death Gambit to me in pretty much every way feels like a lesser Blasphemous. Some of the things in this game I've also found a little bit strange. There is of course that like sci-fi portion where you get like a laser gun and shoot aliens. The one thing I do have to give this game credit for is that weird Lovecraftian boss, Thalamus. That is actually a fun and interesting boss fight. But aside from the weirdness in the settings, uh, the combat system in this game does not feel good at all. It's a 2D combat system and it feels clunky. That's the worst thing. I feel like you run out of stamina way too quickly, attacks are way too slow, heals are extremely slow. Plus, I found the game to have some really, really bad and deceptive hit detection. Deceptive hit detection basically is a code for bad hit detection. Uh, I felt like I was dodging properly and still getting hit. A lot of the attacks are unclear and yeah, the combat system is just a bit of a frustrating mess. The original Death Gambit, again, I would not recommend, but I have heard good things about Afterlife. Uh, apparently they have done a lot to fix uh, the issues with the original game, which is something I 100% can respect when a game dev can go back to an older game, look at their mistakes and work on improving them. I think with the right tweaks, this could become a good game. And I think if Afterlife fixes the issues with the combat, it is something that I might have to go back and check out. All right, let's knock out a couple of more that I've not heard of. Decay of Logos, I've heard the name, but I've not played it. Dolmen, haven't heard of it. It looks like it's one of those sci-fi ones, isn't it? Eldest Souls, one of the most generic titles I can think of, haven't heard of it. Uh, Ender Lilies, haven't heard of it. What the hell is this? I've not heard of this. It's going into the not heard of it category. Yeah, uh, and this one. We have a game that I have heard of, Mortal Shell, and I have played. Mortal Shell is actually going to go into the good category. I have a massive soft spot for Mortal Shell. 
It is a game that I actually really enjoyed. It's a game made by a very small studio. It's a pretty self-contained game. I think it's like a couple of major bosses, like four areas, final boss, uh, nothing too complicated. But overall, I found the combat system to be very fun because this is a dev, just like the devs of The Surge, where they actually got the weighty combat feeling right. And the reason that this game clicks, the way the combat system clicks in Mortal Shell, is because of this Harden mechanic, or N Harden, or whatever it's called. Basically, you can turn to stone at any point during any animation and absorb a single attack. It's a little bit like a parry. And this completely turns a pretty shitty, or what would be a pretty shitty, slow feeling combat system into an actual enjoyable combat system. Because the problem with weighty combat is you'll start your slow ass swing, you'll realize that you've made a mistake, you misjudged distance or something, and then you will be absolutely screwed. Well, in Mortal Shell, you can actually use stuff like that to your advantage because you can go and turn yourself into stone, absorb the attack and continue your assault. This one thing separates Mortal Shell from the other weighty games and actually makes the combat interesting. Now, again, I'm not sh saying that I'm not biased against this game. Something about it just really grabbed me. And actually, I f hella respect the devs for continuing to support this game and having updates, new shells and everything added because it really is a fun little game. And for how small the dev team is, and this is such an indie game, they actually made a good looking game. They have some interesting areas. And yeah, the whole thing is a fun, short, easy, I mean, I can't deny that this game isn't easy, uh, little Souls experience, which I do recommend you check out, if not for any other fact than to support indie developers. All right, we are thinning down the list at this point. Uh, should we talk about Ashen? Yeah, let's talk about Ashen. Ashen is a game that I'm going to have to put into the mech category. People do like this game and I can see the good parts of it. The issue with Ashen for me was that it just didn't grab me. It felt like to me the most generic possible Souls experience you can think of. Uh, the combat system doesn't do anything interesting. I mean, the big draw of this game is sort of the buddy mechanic that you have uh, little buddies that follow you, which can be player controlled. And this game can be, I think, entirely played in co-op or have an AI companion, but other than that, the weapons, the combat system style, the bosses, it just didn't do anything to set itself apart. The art style is probably the most unique aspect of this game, which is, it's a cool little art style, but again, maybe it's just me again, but because this game didn't grab me at all and I had to slog through it to finish, uh, I can't give it any higher than the mech category. To me, this game feels like more like a Dragon Dogma type game. It always reminded me of Dragon Dogma, except Dragon's Dogma does everything this game does way better and is more interesting as an RPG experience. Yeah, I don't know what it was about Ashen. Maybe it's a personal thing. I know you guys probably do like this game, but I was just not very interested in it. Okay, we have a bunch of Souls games here, uh, but... Next up, we have Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is absolutely going into the top tier category. Hollow Knight is such a wonderful game. However, I do have to mention that as per my classifications, I wouldn't necessarily put Hollow Knight into a Souls-like category. To me, this is more of a Castlevania, Metroidvania type game, but I can see the comparison because Hollow Knight is difficult. And I think at this point, any difficult game with stamina management and bosses <laughs> gets classified as a Souls-like. Obviously, Hollow Knight has way more of a focus on platforming than any of these games on the list, maybe with the exception of Blasphemous. But Blasphemous even doesn't focus on platforming as much as Hollow Knight does. Now. I don't think there's much to say about Hollow Knight that hasn't been said already. This game is absolutely fantastic. The setting is super unique. The art style is adorable, but it has that sort of creepy element to it. Uh, the combat system is done masterfully. Platforming is fun. 
the feeling of exploration is really really well done i mean going down into the depths of the world and discovering that void area with the giant lake is going to be one of my favorite experiences in gaming for a long time i think this game pretty much does everything very very well and again is it a souls like i guess it is if you classify it like that and if you do classify it that, like that, it is by far one of the best Souls likes out there. If you have not played Hollow Knight and you have any interest in uh, challenging platforming slash action slash exploration games, give Hollow Knight a try because I swear you will not be disappointed. This game is still to this day one of my favorites. All right, let's talk about the Neo games a little bit here. Uh, which one is which? I think, that, yeah, this is Neo 1. Uh, Neo 1, oh god, I can already hear the pitchforks, is going to go, in my view, into the meh category. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know, this game is pretty beloved, but contrary to most people, I did not enjoy Neo as much. Uh, I did slog through it on a playthrough, which is on YouTube, but I wasn't having fun for a lot of it, and I think... There are some key, and, and I think there are some key annoyances with this game that have detracted from my enjoyment. One of the things being, this game really was the first to pioneer what Elden Ring sort of adopted, and that bosses absolutely melt you. The difficulty of this game is absolutely nutty, and you know, I'm someone who likes difficulty. I do enjoy a challenge, and I do enjoy the challenge Souls games and Souls likes bring. However, I feel like Neo is wearing many times into the unfair category. Again, the exact same thing, I don't deny it, uh, that the latter bosses of Elden Ring also fall into. Unless you're absolutely minted with the top, top, top tier of gear, you're not going to be doing any damage to some of the latter bosses in Neo, and you are going to be melted in a couple of hits. Even if you have good armor, you will be melted in a couple of hits. Uh, that combined with the fact that bosses move at lightning speed really felt like the game was often wearing into the unfair category. Now, that's not the only issue I have with Neo. Uh, the other thing is that I'm not a huge fan of the Diablo style loot system. The thing about it is, yeah, it's not something that I enjoy, you know, just clicking on. Uh, equipment to throw it away and managing like 89 different types of helmets and trying to figure out which one offers the marginally better stats yeah the, it doesn't just fall into the souls likes i don't enjoy the diablo style loot system in any game uh so neo really didn't grab me with that plus of course the big issue which i think everybody can agree on with neo there is an absolute lack of enemy variety and you basically fight the same six or seven enemy types throughout the entire game which when you think about the fact that this game is like 50 hours long that's too much that's too much and aside from the bosses there are barely any original enemies in any of the areas yeah again i know people like this game me i didn't really like it that much and what about Neo 2? Well, Neo 2 actually does fix a lot of the frustrations I had with Neo. I feel like the additions to the combat system being able to turn into a yokai and all of the, again, uh, added mechanics, which there are an absolute ton of in this game, do improve the combat system enough that I can put it into the good tier. Now, do keep in mind that this is still floating somewhere in between for me. I just don't want to add a new tier. But Neo 2 is enjoyable. I have had a lot more fun with this game than I have with Neo 1. And again, that does have to do with the improvements to the combat system. Now, this game is still insanely difficult. It still has the Diablo style loot system. Although I do feel like in this game it's a little bit easier to manage. And it still suffers from uh, bosses just absolutely melting you. And the enemy variety, while improved, is still not the best. But again, simply because it has what I feel like is a way smoother and more cohesive combat system, plus you have more tools at your disposal. All of that combined do push this game, in my view, into the good category. All right, only a few more left. Uh, let's knock out some of the last ones that I've not played. Necropolis, haven't played it, haven't heard of it. Same with Outward. 
Pascal's Wager, uh, I've heard of it, I've seen it, I've not had the chance to play it. Shattered, I don't know what this is. And Vigil, these are the ones that I think I've not touched. I'm just checking what the last three is. Yeah, these are the Souls games, obviously, and yeah, the last few. So let's talk about these last three, starting with Remnant from the Ashes. Remnant from the Ashes, in my view, is a good game. In fact, I would say it's a great game. Again, it's hovering somewhere between top tier and good. Uh, but again, I don't want to make a new tier just for Remnant of the Ashes. This game is absolutely fantastic in the fun part. Ever since Souls Likes have come out, people have tried to do the shooter souls, and most devs have been failing miserably at it with the exception of the Remnant from the Ashes devs. Here is a game that actually does manage to translate the Souls formula and the Souls combat to guns. And this game is just a really fun third-person shooter. I mean, it's not the most challenging, I will give you that. It's very easy to overpower yourself and get some of the really good guns and just demolish the game. But I cannot deny that I've had fun every single hour I've played with Remnant from the Ashes. And I actually gone back twice and cleared the game uh, just on my own because I do enjoy the shooting that much. Yeah, so I can say shooting feels fun. That combined with the soul system of stamina management and the little bit of melee combat is something that really works and it's just really enjoyable playing this game and just shooting up stuff. Plus the co-op system is actually fairly good in this game. It's easy to get matched with your friends and it's fun to go through the game and just demolish stuff. When I play Remnant from the Ashes, I understand why people love games like Destiny and all of these like looter shooters. I get the same vibe from Remnant from the Ashes, but it's in a package that I enjoy way more, which is a Souls-like. Uh, yeah, again, it's one of those games, the good category is difficult to talk about. It's just a good game. I really enjoyed it and I recommend it. Pick it up if you can. Now, the last two, we have Jedi Fallen Order. Now, I don't know if this is controversial or not, but Jedi Fallen Order is going into the top tier. This is a game that I picked up uh, last... Fuck, it was last December, a long time ago at this point, during the Steam sale. And all I can say is that it is a really good Souls Light. You know, people have this term Souls Light, which is basically like baby souls uh, in that it has the same mechanics, the dodging, the parrying, the stamina system but it's way easier in general. But that doesn't matter with Jedi Fallen Order because I think ever since EA took over Star Wars with the exception of Battlefront and with the exception of Squadrons as well, actually there have been a few good Star Wars games, but to me this is still the cream of the crop. Jedi Fallen Order is such a fantastic game. It is a great Star Wars game in that it actually tells a good Star Wars story which fits very well into the canon Cal Kestis is a great character, in fact, probably one of the most compelling characters in Star Wars in a long time, and I think he's like really way more interesting than many of the new characters introduced in the sequel trilogy. That combined with the fun little exploration slash souls light combat system really does make for a good little game. Uh, obviously, this is more a AAA game. There's a lot of like uncharted style sections. There's a lot of cinematic set pieces, but you know, the combat system feels fun and they did really get lightsaber combat down. I think the lightsaber combat with souls light mechanics is really something that works. And again, the whole package just combines into a really, really great Star Wars game experience. I'm so happy that they realized that this works way better than hack and slash. You know, whereas I said that, uh, which game was it? Oh yeah, the Darksiders 3 would work better with Hack and Slash. Well, Star Wars games way, work way better with Souls-like mechanics and are absolutely terrible with Hack and Slash mechanics. There's actual power behind the lightsaber and you actually feel like you're swinging a deadly weapon around than swinging around the light stick you did in like the Force Unleashed 1 and 2. So yeah, Jedi Fallen Order, I can go on for quite a long time about this game because to me, 
as a Star Wars experience, it is very good. And that of course help push, helps push it towards the top tier. And finally, we've come to the last game, actually one of the more recent Souls likes I've picked up, and that is Tales of Iron. And now I'm gonna be honest with you, I've not finished the game yet. I'm fairly far into the whole experience. And I think I can safely say that Tales of Iron is going into the good category. Now let's cover the best parts of this game. It's the art style. The art style is absolutely gorgeous in this game. It kind of has that hand-drawn style. You know, it doesn't go for the pixel style like Blasphemous or Death Gambit does. And it's good because this hand-drawn art style is just absolutely beautiful. I love the world. Obviously, this is a world of animals, rats, frogs, etc. And they're having a little war and you get to participate. You play as a prince. A rat prince and then you go out on a little adventure for yourself now this game is tough uh this game is actually very very challenging but it's the good type of challenging again this is a game that gets the 2d souls formula feeling just right uh i don't have the same gripes of uh feeling uh, and feelings of frustration as i have with salt and sanctuary and death gambit it's not as smooth as Hollow Knight and Blasphemous' combat system, but it's good enough. They translated the formula well. Now, the bosses are good as well, and yeah, it's overall a great Souls experience with the one major drawback, and that is probably one of the main reasons uh, it's not going into the top tier category, is that this game is just incredibly padded out. There is a ton of side quests, and the side quests just become an absolute slog. So. Do I recommend this game? Absolutely. Uh, what I would probably recommend, and it's something I sort of switched towards when I was playing towards the latter half, is just ignore the side quests because they drag on way too long and they are not worth it 90% of the time. But the combat it itself, the setting and the bosses all combine into a great experience. And yeah, it's a game that I really enjoy. And yeah, that about covers it, I think, outside of the actual FromSoft games. Now, since this list was created, whoever created it, uh, there have been two big Souls games that have come out. Uh, one that I don't know the name of, which where you play as that Plague Doctor type character. And the other one, uh, actually I don't know the name of that one either, shows you how much I'm paying attention, where you play as the French robot. Now, those are, again, Souls likes, very heavily drawing on the formula. I kind of heard they both aren't that good. So maybe when I play those eventually and they become a part of this list, I can add them to. At this point, I wouldn't be able to comment on them. But yeah, that's the list. Again, pretty much anything in the good and top tier tier. I'd say check those out. Give those a shot if you haven't already. If you do like Souls Likes, you will probably, probably enjoy them. These ones you're just going to have to make your own decision on. So yeah, that I think wraps it up. I've talked enough. You're probably tired of my voice. I don't know. Give me your thoughts. What are your views on these games? Yeah, give me your own tier list. What other Souls games have I missed? What's your different opinion? Give me your different opinions. Uh, get those pitchforks out because I can take it. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. If you did enjoy this video, thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure to give it a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you stay up to date on my content. And yeah, I'll catch all of you next time. Peace out and goodbye.